Hello, and welcome back to another CodePro tutorial. In today's tutorial, we are going to learn how to mix Swift together with Objective-C in an iOS application and use them both together. If you're a new mobile developer just getting started and you like the content on this channel, then definitely make sure you check out my iOS fundamentals course available on Udemy and on Skillshare. If you sign up using my links down below in the description, you'll get 50% off of my Udemy course and three months of Skillshare premium for free. So with that said, let's open up Xcode and get started. So for the iOS portion, open up Xcode and create a new project. And we'll go ahead and create a single view application for the um, iOS piece. And for the language, pick Objective-C instead of Swift. And I'm just going to name mine uh, Bridging, Swift, and OBJ-C. And then go ahead and uh, create your project. And let's go ahead and actually get things set up. Now inside of the project over here in the file hierarchy, we can see all the Objective-C classes. We have the view controller, the app delegate, the storyboard, um, but everything is an Objective-C like we specified. So that's fine. What we can do next is actually create the bridging part. So automatically, if you create a new Swift file, for example, um, and let me just go ahead and create one here, and I'll just call this, um, call it mock API client, just as an arbitrary example. Um, and hit finish, you'll notice that Xcode automatically asks you, would you like to configure an Objective-C bridging header? Um, so you can go ahead and create this here or hit don't create. And for the sake of simplicity, we'll go ahead and hit create. And what that does here is creates a bridging Swift and OBJC, or basically the, the project or the module name, uh, dash bridging dash header dot h. And this is where you're going to put all of your Objective-C header imports that you want to use in Swift. Um, and so if we go to the project here, and let's go into the, on the target here, if you select that, then we go into the build settings. Let's look for bridging. And right here under the Swift compiler general, you'll see Objective-C bridging header and this is where it actually specifies where the file is. So let's say you created the file uh, manually, right? Um, and you didn't get Xcode to automatically prompt you like it did for us. You can go into the build settings here and actually create a file and link it here under the Objective-C bridging header so Xcode can find this. And so at this point, let's go ahead and create a quick little mock class here that we might want to call from Objective-C and maybe call some Objective-C from in here. Um, so I'm just going to do a class mock API client. And I'm going to create that, give it an initializer, initializer called, and mock API client. I just want to create a log trace so we can see things as they occur in the um, lifecycle when we create this class. And I'll tell a function um, execute uh, request. And this is really just a, a dummy method here. It's not really going to do anything. Print um, the execute request has been called in the mock API client. And so we've got, we've skeletoned out a very basic class in Swift. Now let's go back into Objective C here and figure out okay, well, how do we call a Swift class? inside of Objective-C um, in, in this project. So if we wanted to try to instantiate that class here, if I wanted to do mock API client, client equals mock API client new, and you'll see that there's no autocorrect here, so something seems to be obviously broken. It's not autofilling anything for me. I try and build this project, well, it's going to fail. Um, Objective-C cannot see the Swift class by default. So the best place to look is developer.apple.com and they have a section called Using Swift with Cocoa in Objective-C. And this is the official documentation for how to import Swift or Objective-C uh, back and forth between uh, each language. And it's really um, a good read um, and it's subject to change with each version of Swift. So even though what this tutorial covers is going to be over Swift 4.1, uh, things in here can change as Swift evolves, which could potentially break this tutorial in the future. So that's just something to keep in mind. Um, but basically what we need to do is we have to import the Swift header 
into Objective C, or basically the um, product, the, the module name of this project, uh, dash swift.h, in order to use this mock API client Swift class that we created. So we can do that simply by doing this. Inside of our uh, view controller implementation, we can do a pound import bridging Swift and OBJC dash Swift dot H, right? But there's still one more step we need to do here. Uh, if you try to build this right now, it will still fail. So if we go to the mock API client, it is a Swift class, a pure Swift class. It doesn't have all of the NS object attributes um, available to it because we are not uh, deriving this class from an NS object. So if we want to use this in Objective-C, what we're going to have to do is derive this class from an NS object. And that's going to change a couple of things. Notably, our initializer is going to have to override the NS objects in it or method there. Um, and now, so we have override keyword for the init and inheriting from NS object. Let's go back into viewcontroller.m and build the project one more time. And you can see that the build succeeds. So if we go ahead and run this, uh, you'll see that the initializer print statement should be called in our Swift class. So let's just go ahead and give this a minute to start up and then inspect the console log. And so you can see right here, initializer called in the mock API client. Uh, if I wanted to go ahead and call that method, client execute request. And let's put a breakpoint on that line there and actually step into it so we can see this fire. And we'll step in. And now we're in the Swift code and you can see that that print statement gets called right here. And so we've access, successfully uh, went from Objective-C into Swift. Uh, so uh, that works pretty well. But let's take a closer look at what was going on with that NS object uh, inheritance that we derived from. So if we command click an NS object, um, we can take a look at this class. And this is coming from, if you look at the hierarchy here, Objective-C, NS object, uh, and then the class NS object here. Uh, we can see that NS object itself comes from the NS object protocol. And it has a bunch of methods here, load, initialize, the public initializer. It has some of the Objective-C uh, legacy code that we can still use, such as like conforms to protocol, method for a selector, um, is a subclass of. So uh, you can use all of this functionality in Swift by uh, deriving from NS object. And that's just something to keep in mind. So now let's go back and consider the other scenario where we want to use Objective-C from inside of our Swift class. Now let's go ahead and create the Objective-C code that our Swift code is going to try to use. So since we're kind of creating a mock API client here, we can go ahead and create a mock login request that has an endpoint and some optional parameters if we want to pass them in. I, this would be something best suited for a unit test, but it just kind of makes sense using this context here. Um, so what we'll do is go over here and create a new file, new Cocoa Touch class, and it's going to be a mock login endpoint. Uh, subclass NS object, and we'll use Objective-C for the language. And we'll create that. And um, let's go back into our viewcontroller.m here, and we'll import in the mock login endpoint.h, like that. Uh, and now let's go ahead and actually define this class here. Uh, so the interface has been created for us already. Uh, what we want to do is uh, create an initializer. Uh, so what we'll do is instance type uh, init, and we're going to use a endpoint, and we'll take some parameters. of type NS dictionary um, parameters, like that. And what we can do here is uh, we'll just go ahead and provide some Swift hints. Um, so we can do a non-null here, a non-null here. And since parameters can be optional, we'll put nullable. And this is basically, it helps our Swift code know um, if some things are going to be 
nil or they should have a value. Um, it just makes it a little bit easier on the Swift side. And, and I'll, you'll, you'll see more once we get there. So we'll create two properties here. Uh, we'll do first for the parameters, nullable, non-atomic, strong, and as dictionary parameters. And that property, non-null, non-atomic, strong. And this one will just be an NSURL uh, for the endpoint. OK. Now uh, we'll go into the .m file for the implementation of this class here and flush that out. So we'll go into the init and see if we can have the objective C auto fill that out for us like this. And we'll do if self equals super init, then do some stuff and return self. The stuff we need to do is going to be assigning the endpoint, which is an NSURL, and we're going to build um, an NSURL URL with string, and we'll use the endpoint string that was passed in. And we'll also assign the parameters, if we have any, um, to the parameters dictionary uh, that was passed in to the function. Um, and make sure we put a semicolon there. And we're all good to go from here. So at this point, um, let's go into our Swift bridging header. Now to expose mock log and endpoint, we need to import it in the bridging header here. So how we do that is just simply doing this, import mock login endpoint dot h. And then we can go back over into our view controller. And let's go ahead and actually instantiate one of those endpoints. So we'll do mock login endpoint equals a mock alloc in it, and we'll initialize it with mock endpoint for the string. Should probably give it a real And I'll just, so since this is nullable for the dictionary, I'm just gonna pass in nil, right? Um, if I tried to take the Swift hint out, but or not out, but pass in nil when I tell it it's not gonna be nil, you'll see that we're gonna get a warning here that's gonna show up. So actually, let me see if I can show you that. And that warning says null was passed to a callee that requires a non-null argument. Because I said by saying it's non-null that we have to provide a value for this parameter. However, this one is allowed to be nil because I said it's nullable. Um, and so that's kind of why you're seeing that warning there. So we've built out our endpoint. Now what we can do is go back to our API client in our Swift code. And because we exposed it in the bridging header, we can simply use it like this with endpoint mock login endpoint. And so now we just changed the signature of the method here. So we need to go ahead and update that in our viewcontroller.m. So go back here. And execute with request is going to become execute request with mock end point. So we can pass our Objective-C into the Swift code here. And we'll, we'll throw a breakpoint here. Let's make sure that builds. And the final step I want to show you here is printing out these properties. So the endpoint that we passed in with the um, Swift hints tells us that, see how parameters is optional here? It has the question mark, it may be nil, but if we go and look at the endpoint itself, um, endpoint dot endpoint URL, it's not nil. Um, and that's because of that Swift hint that we added. So let's go ahead and run this and step through it just so you can see it. So that's nil for the parameters, and uh, you can see that the endpoint printed out here um, 
right in the console log, fakeapi.com forward slash login. And that's really all there is to it. So just to recap, um, when you want to include your Objective-C into Swift, uh, you're going to go ahead and import your Objective-C in the bridging header file. And from the Objective-C side, if you want to include your Swift code into your Objective-C code, you'll need to include the Swift header like this. And granted, this is in Swift 4.1, this current tutorial. Things are always subject to change, but probably not by much in later versions of Swift and versions of iOS um, in the future. Um, but at a general level, that's all that is really required to use um, Swift and Objective-C back and forth inside of an application target. Now, inside of a framework, things are a little bit different. I do have a tutorial on building dynamic frameworks in iOS that covers how to use Swift and Objective-C um, in a framework setting. And you can see the, the uh, card uh, up above here for a link to that if you're interested in watching that tutorial, um, because that's where uh, you'll have to use the framework header instead of the Swift bridging header, but pretty much everything else is the same. And that wraps up this tutorial. If you found this tutorial helpful, let me know. Go ahead and smash that like button and consider subscribing to Code Pro to stay up to date for all the latest tutorials. Make sure to follow Code Pro on social media and let me know in the comment section down below what tutorial you guys would like to see next. Thank you so much for stopping by and I'll catch you in the next one.